All right, everybody. We've got. Uh... We are going to do do this thing. So, so just so everyone knows, I know most of you will think that we are doing a comedy bit that me and Brian worked out, and in fact, none of that is true. There was a deposition. Vince McMahon was deposed two weeks ago um, in the Oliver Luck case, and um, a couple people have seen it. It's it's out. It's out there if you want to see it. And the Observer will have a transcription too. But but. Um, I kind of told Brian that that we need to do it, and Brian wants to be Vince McMahon. Yes, I have to be Vince in this case. Okay, so anyway, so I am, just so you guys all know, my name is Paul Dabrowski, and I am the attorney for um, Oliver Luck, and Vince McMahon is about to be deposed. Well, he's being deposed right now. Yes, and this I'm is on the stand. A, you're on the stand, so you're going to be Vince. Okay. So this anyway, is an exact transcript. This is, that's right. This it, it will sound very funny to you, and you will think this is very clever, and it never happened. And this is exactly what happened. Under oath. Under oath. Under oath. So we're under oath. We're both sworn in. Um, well, Vince is sworn in. Okay. And the court reporter is swearing in the witness, Mr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Mm -hmm. um, and I am Paul, and I go, what was your position with Alpha prior to bankruptcy? Owner. Were you the chairman of Alpha as well? I was the owner. Okay, but did you have any title such as like the chairman or like, you know, office chairman or something? I might have, but I was the owner. Okay. And do you mean what did you understand what being the owner meant? The owner meant that everyone would follow my directive. They would follow the tenant of the way that WWE began. I'm sorry, the way Alpha began. Okay, real that quick. That is... Just, just, just real quick. Brian did not misspeak. That is exactly what he said. Go ahead. Uh, the way Alpha began. That is, uh, that I said in my opening remarks to the media, that the quality of the human being was as important as the quality of the player. Right. So, um, the person who had been criminally charged with a felony would not be permitted to play in the XFL, right? Yes. And I'm sorry, sir, were you ever criminally charged previously? People are going to know where this is going. I'm sorry, were you ever criminally charged previous to starting the XFL in 2018? Was I prior to this? Yeah. I was and acquitted. I didn't ask if you were acquitted. I asked if you were criminally charged. I was and acquitted. What were you criminally charged with? A charge that someone has never been charged with before or since. It was something along the lines of deceiving the FDA in some capacity and things along those lines. Okay. Now, this is... I'm veering from the script now to explain that what actually he was charged with was um, uh, conspiring with George Zahorian to distribute steroids to his wrestlers, number one, which he was acquitted for. And then also he was charged with uh, distributing... Uh, steroids to Terry Bollea, Hulk Hogan, which was dropped because of venue issues, because there was no proof that this happened in Long Island, and the testimony was that it happened in Connecticut, and this the court where we, Vince was tried uh, did not have jurisdiction in Connecticut, and Connecticut had no intention of trying to uh, um, uh, you know charge Vince with that case because it's Connecticut, and also because you know it was the the the, the package of steroids that were sent to Vince. And Vince would then give stuff to Hogan. It wasn't like Vince was dealing, but he was distributing. So it's kind of weird. But anyway, so, so the FDA thing, he, Vince always says that. And there was actually something to that. It's not like he made it up out of thin air, but that was not what he was charged with in the end or anything like that. Um, there was a charge of, there was a charge in there, but that was thrown out long ago. Okay. So I'm going back to what happened. Okay. And I'm not a criminal lawyer like Mr. McMahon. Uh, but was that a felony charge? It would have been, yes. And so if a person had your background as a player, would they have been disqualified from being employed by the XFL? If, in fact, someone had been charged with a felony? Um, yeah. If, in fact, uh, yes, they would have been. And that would have meant that by being charged with a criminal felony such as yourself they were not men of good character as you phrased it 
Now, also, we don't have somebody to play Jerry McDivitt, but um, Jerry McDivitt objected to this question, and um, he was, in fact, overruled. And then I'm going, you can answer that, Vince. Uh, that's correct. Okay, so under the definition, of, under your definition of the WWE standard, you are not a man of good character. True? And McDivitt objected again, and uh, again, um, um, it, it uh, mentioned also that he used the name that, that I said WWE when I was supposed to say um, Alpha, um, you know, so go ahead. Well, then so you, you you're, go. you're right. You're right. Thank you, Jerry, for saying that under your definition that applied to the XFL employees and players, particularly, you were not a man of good character. True. And uh, Jerry McDivitt, in fact, objected again. And the and then again, he was told that uh, it was overruled. And you can answer that. You must answer that, Vince. As an owner, I would not have been allowed to play. But it was OK for you to be the owner with the criminal charge, right? And Jerry objected again, and and Vince concludes, I was the owner. So anyway, that was uh, the Oliver Luck deposition, um, or part of it. Obviously, not the whole deposition, but the comedic part of the deposition. Well, if you want the whole definition or the whole deposition, I guess it's in the Observer this week. It'll be in the Observer, yes. Oh my God! Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio. We got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.